You're now tuned in to the Desire to Trade podcast, a show where we bring you the best figures of the trading world and teach you how you can become a successful trader. This is your host, Etienne Kret. Etienne Kret here, Fox Trader and founder of Desire to Trade. Welcome to episode 105 of the Desire to Trade podcast. There seems to be a couple of things that are quite similar in all the traders out there. Many people tend to think that there's something magical to be mastered in trading, but in fact, a lot of successful traders you see all have the same things that they apply on a daily basis. And I had the chance to get reminded of that in this interview. I sat down with Kevin Hunt, a Forex day trader, who's also part of the team with Kim Crumpus. Kevin has an amazing story of how he came across trading in the first place and what he had to do to learn how to successfully trade. We focus on the habits and the lessons Kevin got through his years of trading. He's been able to go from struggling to successful in only a couple of years. And some of the things he shared made all the difference for him. So there's a lot to be reminded of in this interview. Please help me welcome Kevin Hunt. Kevin Hunt, welcome to the podcast. How's it going today? Thanks, Etienne. Uh, hi, it's great to be here. Thanks for inviting me. After listening to your podcast for so long, it's an absolute pleasure to be here. It really is. Thanks. I love that. Thank you so much for being here. And I think it's going to be interesting. Well, I was kind of impatient for this interview because you are one of the traders trading in the London session, and I didn't have the chance to talk with that many traders for that session. So I'm curious to know what we're going to talk about today. Okay. And usually the first question we ask the guests is what is one quote that inspires you? Uh, the quote that I live by, and I have done for some time now, it's give even if you only have a little. And I try to live by that every day. And whether it's like going into a coffee shop and buying a coffee and putting the change into a charity box or posting encouragement to other traders on Twitter, or even just smiling at a stranger in the street, by giving to others, you'll gain a lot for yourself. I like it. That's pretty cool. It's pretty unusual, but I like it a lot. Nice. It makes so, sense. Tell us a little bit what's going on these days in your life and what exactly you're doing. Okay, well, what it is, I'm, I'm actually working with Kim Crompus at the Price Action Traders Institute now. So what I usually do, because I've got other things going on as well, Wednesdays and Thursdays, I'll actually work with the London members, well, the London session members for Kim, run the London trade plan, and then trade alongside them, helping them out on Twitter throughout the session. The rest of the week, well, I say the rest of the week, I only trade four days a week. So Monday, Tuesday and Thursday, I'll usually trade the New York session. But it depends on what's going on. I, I don't mind either whether I trade London or New York. I'm just curious, do you have the same trading style in London and New York or is it a different thing? Exactly the same. Okay. Exactly the same. No different at all. The setup, the criteria, everything is exactly the same and it works the same. Sometimes, you know, some days you'll have it good, some days it won't be so good. So uh -huh. it depends on what the price action does. Of course, cool. So tell us a bit, how do you start to trade exactly? How did you come to trading in the first place? Okay, well, how I come to trade originally, what led me to it was I'd been running an IT company, an IT support company that I'd started myself from scratch in 1998. And over a period of 10 years, I'd built the company up to a reasonable level to where I was looking at the exit strategy. And at that point, due to a rogue element within the business, I ended up losing everything, losing my company and losing absolutely everything that I'd invested in it. Now, when that happened, I was in a pretty bad way for a while, a bit lost, didn't know which way I was going to go. And I was very good friends with a, an Indian family, a, a Sikh family over here. Their son had actually worked for me for a while. And I ended up going out to India with them. Uh, they own a sugarcane farm up in the northern Punjab. It's a tiny, tiny village, about two hours east of Amritsar. And I don't know, being there it just gave me a, a time to reflect and I found myself in this small village with strangers who would treat me as if I was like a long lost friend. You know, people were so friendly. They were so giving, so generous. And they had, you know, these people had absolutely no material wealth, going about their daily business with smiles on their faces. And that experience just gave me a completely new perspective on life. But being there, I mean, I still had no idea what I was going to do next, but I knew that I wanted to do something where I, I could make a living, not having to rely on anyone else after what had happened with the previous business venture. And I also wanted location freedom to enable me to help others. So 
it was actually during the flight on the way back to the UK that I got talking to the guy who was sitting next to me. He turned out to be a Forex trader, Indian lad. Turned out to be a Forex trader, and that was it. That was the light bulb moment that actually uh, turned me on to trading in the first place. Pretty cool, pretty unexpected. I like I guess story for sure. Absolutely, and yeah. How, how did you go from there? Because obviously it didn't go like super straight from that moment. No, how was the learning no. process? Absolutely not. It was anything but straightforward. It was, that was about 2011 when I spoke to that guy. Now, I dips in and out of looking at different things to do with trading. And, you know, I was just casually browsing over things and, and you know, deciding which way I could approach it. And it wasn't actually until 2013 that the obsession kicked in. And it, by then, it really was an obsession. So to start with, the learning process for me was a complete nightmare. You see, what it is, all great traders these days start with the same thing, and that's Google and YouTube. You probably know mm -hmm. that. Of course, of <laughs> and, course. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we all think that we're going to find someone with the information that will allow us to just follow what they're doing, make lots of money, and go and live on a beach somewhere. It takes, you know, some time before you actually realize that the majority of what you find on the internet is absolute misleading nonsense. But it's not all doom and gloom because in amongst all that mud and silt, if you're lucky, you will find the few gold nuggets. And I was quite lucky to do that. So, uh, yeah, that was the beginning of the learning process for me. Mm -hmm. And did you go through day trading at the beginning or did you try a few different methods before you started to... I was trying all sorts. I, I, I was leaving positions open overnight, no stops, big stops. It was just, all you know, and I, I actually paid... I paid to go to a seminar in London with someone. I mean, that guy, I still receive emails from him now. And it seems like on a monthly basis, he's coming up with something new and changing the way that he trades. There was no consistency, nothing, nothing actually seemed to make a lot of sense to me. So, um, yeah, it took me a little while to work out what I was going to do and how I was going to do it. And it was you know, purely by chance that I stumbled across what I did. So, yeah, in the end, it worked out OK. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious to know, why did you pick day trading? And... I guess maybe tell us some of, some of the advantages you found and maybe some disadvantages if you found out some, but I'm just curious to know why. Okay, well, what it was, it was the thing that actually made me decide the exact way that I was going to trade was that, like I said, I tried all these different things and, you know, they didn't work and it was just no good at all. And it was purely by chance, purely by chance that I come across Kim Krampus. So, yeah, what it was, after spending like a couple of years studying and trying many, many different methods and different strategies and getting nowhere with it, I just consciously stopped and stepped back a little bit and looked at what I was, you know, I was seeing all these different methods of trading. Many of them were working really well for the people that were trading them. Even some of the people that were open with their results, you could see that some of these methods were working. And I was trying all these different methods and I don't know, I just couldn't get, I just couldn't get my head around it. It just wasn't working for me. So what I did then, I actually stepped back and instead of looking at all these individual ways of trading, I took them all together and I tried to see if there was any kind of consistency between them or if there was anything that they all had in common. And even though they were all different, the two things that I found that all of the, d these different successful traders had in common with their methods and their strategies was that they all worked not with the same risk management, but they were all very, very strict with their risk management, whether that be 1%, half a percent or whatever it was. They were really, really tight on whatever risk management strategy they had in place. But also the other thing that they all kept on banging on about was the psychological aspect of it. You know, every single one of them was absolutely adamant at how important the psychological aspect was. Like I say, the risk management was simple maths. It didn't matter, you know, whichever way you looked at it, whichever your risk was going to be, it was simple maths. And although it is just simple maths, the psychological forces at work in your head while trying to stick with that risk management are phenomenal. So this psychological problem was something that I needed to address, obviously. And it was then, purely by chance, a friend of mine, he introduced me to the book Trading in the Zone by Mark Douglas. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if anyone, anyone's learning to trade and they only ever, ever read one trading psychology book in their life, it really should be this one. It's a gem. It really is. It's got so much in it. and it's just so precise and it's so, I don't know, it's so valuable to anyone because everyone needs to take control of that psychological aspect of their trading life. And this book really does do it. And also it was around about that time when I started to discover, discover this. So I've worked out the risk management was very important rather than just having no stops. And I needed to concentrate on the psychological side of things. And it was around about that time that I was listening to another podcast. I was listening to all these different podcasts 
I was driving through London and I heard this woman trader called Kim Krompus who was being interviewed. She was, uh, she ran a mentoring program called the Price Action Traders Institute. You interviewed her 100, didn't you? 100, the 100th episode yeah. of your podcast. And throughout her interview, this interview that I'd heard way back then, I don't know, she just come across as a, a decent, calm person with a sense of integrity. And unlike many of the other like snake oil, <laughs> snake oil salesmen that I'd come across before, she explained her day trading method, worked with clean charts, there was no indicators, pure price action, no open trades overnight or at weekends. And to me, that seemed to draw me as well. The fact, first of all, she seemed she come across as a really decent, honest person. Two, she was talking about trading without the, the RSI, the crossover moving averages, the MACDs, and everything else that I'd been trying to grasp previous to that. So when I got home, I did a little research and then I was, you know, emailing Kim a few times, speaking to her, got a few questions answered and I decided to join. And it was that within a few months, her criteria was so simple. It really was the, the method that she uses for trading. So, so simple. It really is. It really is easy. And once I had that down, then it was just a case of me getting to work on my mindset to get that uh, straightened out, to get that sorted. Okay, so so we need to focus a little, a little on that because that was, I guess, not so long ago, like maybe a few years ago. That was, uh, I actually joined Kim August 2015. Right, okay. Okay, so that, that's pretty cool. That's a pretty big uh, growth then for, from that moment. So mm -hmm. how did you become profitable from there? And how did that happen? Well, from that moment on, because the strategy that I was using then is exactly the same as the strategy I'm new, using now. And the only thing that changed during that time period and it's still changing now. I mean, I'm constantly working on the psychological aspect. It was purely the way that I was learning to control myself, the way that I traded, you know, not having fear of missing out, not jumping out too fast when a trade was taking profit, not being tempted to take trades outside of the criteria or the rules. And it was purely, purely the mindset. So having this criteria down, having this strategy down, which like I say, anyone can learn that and it is very, very easy. And it's just a case of working on the mindset. Now, that for some people, that can go on forever. You know, they, they just don't get it. And that's why I, I'm supposing that so many people fail at trading, forex trading, because it is difficult. You start to analyze yourself, yourself, you start to look in on yourself, and you really do have to start pulling yourself apart and questioning why you do things. What made you do that? Why did you react like that? And you have to start looking at that before you can start fixing it. And then you get to that equilibrium where you're, on a level path where you can do what you're meant to do without all of these outside aspects affecting what you're doing. And that's when you suddenly become profitable. You become a successful trader. Hmm. And was there like a clear point where you realized you were successful or was it just looking back, you say, oh, so I'm profitable and successful? It just drifted in. It was, right. I don't know, it was, you know, it, was, it really did. There wasn't a day when I woke up and suddenly thought this is it. I mean, there were a few key moments. I'm just trying to think. You know, every now and then there'll be something that I would hear on a um, psychology program on YouTube or something like that, or something that Kim would come out with, or another trader. I mean, there's many different traders out there who are extremely good, and you know, I'm not just pointing at Kim and everything's down to Kim, because it's obviously not, but you know, you would just suddenly hear something else, and then you would pick up on that, and that would help you hone that skill of being in control of the way that you reacted to certain aspects of your trading. And that is such a big part of it. If only people would realize that that is the most important part of it. There's a couple of friends of mine who have started working and, and working with Kim and then they've pulled out for a little while for different reasons. And, but I've said to them right from the start, before I even sat them down with charts, I made sure that they read that trading in the zone book. And I made sure that they started to look at themselves and started to analyze themselves. That was before I even set the charts up for them. And they couldn't work it out. They're saying, well, why am I doing this? You know, look, come on, let's onto these charts. Let's get going. And, but it was like, you know, they were chomping at the bit and I said, no, hold back a little bit because this really is. And one day you'll realize how important it is. But the other thing is, I mean, that going back to that trading in the zone book again, you read that and it's not just traders. You look at many aspects of that book and it can have an effect on the way that you lead your life, the way that you treat other people, all kinds of things. It really can. It's such a deep, meaningful book. Um, but yeah, that, that psychological thing, it just drifted in gradually. And I mean, even now I'm still improving i have losing yeah, days i'm yeah. losing day to day and you do feel you can't stop yourself feeling down and fed up sometimes but the main thing is is to have that psychological control where it won't affect the way that you trade mm -hmm. 
So yeah, so how do you personally deal with those losing days or weeks or kind of moments? Just, <laughs> I, I get annoyed with it sometimes. I won't, I won't lie. I get fed up with it sometimes. Uh-huh. But uh, what do you do? You know, you don't revenge trade. You don't start taking trades that you shouldn't be taking to try and get it back. You just close the charts down, you walk away from it. And then when you open the charts the following day or the following week, it's a fresh day. You, you're approaching it with a fresh set of eyes, totally clear mindset, and you're ready for whatever the markets offer that day. Could be good, could be bad. And we never, ever know. These predictions, these people that predict all the time, I don't know. I don't know what their success rate is. But for me, it seems that no one knows what the markets are going to do. There's such a, a massive input into those markets and into those prices. I think it'd be pretty impossible for anyone to accurately assess what's going to happen. So you just go to it fresh and you forget what's happened the day before or the week before and you're a level a level ground again and you're thinking, okay, right, look for this criteria. If it happens, go for it, take it and see if we can pull something from the markets. Mm-hmm, That's mm-hmm. the way that I do it now. Mm-hmm. And speaking from experience, I know how tough this is to develop, this skill of like just walking away. But once you have the skill, it becomes much easier, like already. So it's very important to develop for sure. It really does. Yeah, it makes a massive difference. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. So I want to transition this to your trading style today. What does that look like? I'll say my only trading style is purely using that criteria of Kim's. So it's I'll sit down, take this morning, for instance, I sat down, I did the trade plan with the members. When the London opened at eight o'clock London time, I was just looking for my criteria to be hit. I had all my charts marked up, whether they be in ranges or whether they be in clear directional moves. Just looking for criteria to be hit for price to come back and touch the yellow lines that I had marked up or to break out of the ranges that I had marked. And that was it. I was just taking the trades and you know, just getting into them. I was down today. Like I say, it was a bad day. Such a slow, slow morning. It was oh, yeah. tedious. <laughs> it really was. Were you trading yourself? Yeah, but I'm not detrading, so I cannot really testify on that. But, oh, yeah. okay, right, okay. Yeah, we're looking at the 15-minute charts like I do. Yeah. It's uh, it, it was so. horrendous. <laughs> it really, really was. So, yeah, good day for that. A uh, good test on the psychology today, that's for sure. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I know you're kind of big on sharing your trading stats also because I've seen your website and you share a lot of like what's going on and the trading results you have. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I'm just curious to know, do you have like an average win rate to expect when you trade? or No. No, no, no. I, I don't expect anything at all from the markets. I take whatever's there. And you're saying about sharing my results. It's, you know, anyone, this is something else. Many of the people that I worked with in the early days, you know, they would talk about this, they would talk about that, but many of them weren't even trading themselves. They were giving this advice. They were telling people what to do, but they wasn't even trading themselves. They were just professional teachers and, and that was it. And they, they taught whatever the paperwork told them to talk and yeah. they didn't even, didn't even trade it. But of course, they didn't have any results to put out, but those that were trading would not put their results out either. But it's something that I've always done, and it helps me. It keeps me honest. It keeps me straight, and it keeps me transparent with what I'm doing. So anyone who follows me on Twitter will know that every session that I trade, I post every single trade as I take it. So if I take a trade, long or short, I will instantly, or as soon as I can after I've taken the trade, I'll put it out on Twitter. And then I'll put the result of that trade out, whether I stop out or whether I take profit. Win or lose, I'll put it on there. And like I say, just this morning, it was really, really slow in London. I ended up 62 pips down this morning. No big deal. I can have two trades tomorrow, two reasonable trades tomorrow, not big, and that will pull that loss back for me. But I won't approach tomorrow thinking, right, I need that 62 pips back. Tomorrow is a completely fresh day. But it's just as an example, looking at that 62 pip loss today, it's no big deal getting that back because we're working with very tight stops. We never allow ourselves to come down and have massive drawdowns. But that's it. As soon as I was flat today, you'll see it on Twitter. My result was out there straight away. And I also post my weekly results and my monthly results on my website. So complete transparency. But that helps me to, I don't know, keep it real, to stay honest with what I'm doing. And I don't know, it just just helps me keep it all together, I suppose. Yeah. And one thing I've seen for myself is that since I published my results, like I do basically a monthly review like you do, Mm-hmm. And it really helps with the accountability that you have with kind of your trading. Because yeah, you don't have to report to anyone, but when you report to people, you kind of just get more accountable for sure. It really does. Useful. Yeah. It, no, it really, really does. And that way, you know, I can put my percentages out there as well. Percent gain or loss on, on capital each day or each week or each month. And it's a good indicator for me. But the fact that I'm actually putting them out there as I'm trading, it's not like I can go back at the end of the day and start shifting things and cheating and lying. 
Mm-hmm. It's there constantly. It's yeah. there live as I'm trading. And also I'll take screenshots and more often than not, I'll post them out as well. So it does. It really does help me a lot with my trading and helps me move forward with it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I think even if you can push this like further, because we are online watching this online, but I think people can do the same like at home with the people around them, just to get some accountability. Also, I think that could help. Really, yeah, yeah, it really could. It's uh, an, another friend of mine who started off trading with me. Well, he started trading after me, but he used to come around quite often. He's not trading at the moment; he's got other things on. But he'd come around quite often, and we'd be sitting beside each other and trading together, and that helped him a lot. Plus, my partner, she trades as well. She trades exactly the same criteria as what I do, and we're sitting in the same office working together at home, and that helps as well, you know. We'll give each other the heads up if there's something happening, and but also, you know, that helps me with, occasionally you'll make a mistake, you know, you might hit something or you might go to hit something that isn't quite criteria, and she'll pull me up on it, which is great. But no, it really does, publishing results, talking to other people about them, putting them out there. It really does make a big difference in the way that you trade, I believe. Yeah, totally. And what are some of the habits you've developed over time that you think help you succeed in trading? I don't know. I suppose it's just that consistency, I suppose, in what I'm doing. You know, being well prepared, being well organized. I sit down and I'm ready to trade. I don't have any faffing around or any messing about to do. It's just ready to go. I'll sit down, I'll open the laptop up, I'll have a cup of coffee with me and that's it. I'm ready to go. So being well organized keeping track of everything as you're doing it, keeping a journal. Mm -hmm. That's a very important part. It's a very important habit. And also I'll do screenshots. The other thing is, is doing that, keeping your journal and keeping your screenshots, a great habit for anyone to have. Some people see it as a bit of a hindrance, you know, especially the way that I trade as a day trader, working with 15 minute charts. The markets are moving. It is pretty hectic sometimes. And you're sitting there, you take a trade. And the way that I do it is I must take a screenshot and I must mark it in my journal. Now, Like I say, some people see that as a hindrance, but the good thing about that is you have a bad day and you can just go back over it at the end of the day and you can see that everything you did was exactly what you were meant to do. And it doesn't feel half as bad, you know, even on a losing day, you know that you've done exactly what you were meant to do. In fact, I heard a trader, a lady trader a few years ago now, I can't, I don't remember who she was now, but saying that about checking up on what you're doing and, and making sure that you're being true to yourself, she said something along the lines that, At the end of each week, she would look at her trades. If she was up, if she was in a winning position and she looked back over her journal and her screenshots and she realized that she cheated herself, that she'd taken trades that were way outside of her criteria and she shouldn't have taken, she'd end up having beans on toast that night for dinner. But if she looked back over her trades and she'd had a losing week, but she checked and everything was exactly as it was and the trades were exactly as they should have been and the criteria was hit exactly right every time, even though she'd lost that week, She'd treat herself to a nice meal or she'd go out and have her nails done and everything else. And that is that thing about instilling that thing about, you know, you've got to stick with that criteria. It's pointless cheating. Even if you have a winning day, you cheat. You have a winning day. You don't feel great about it. It might, you know, give you a few extra quid in the bank, but you don't feel good about it. And it's not something that you can, can repeat on a constant basis. You need that set criteria to be able to repeat, repeat, repeat the same criteria and end up, you know, overall being consistently profitable. Exactly, exactly. So what does your trading journal look like? Is it pen and paper like Kim or different? Kim has got a blank book and she writes everything out. Now, if you saw my writing, I should have been a doctor, the state of my writing. It's, um, it looked like there's a spider that has gone into an inkwell and crawled all over the page if I hammer it everything. So what I do, I actually print out a, from Excel, I print out a blank sheet showing the pairs that I trade. You know, it'll say the date. It will say, I've got one here in front of me. Yeah, it'll say the date at the top. It's This is printed out, the date, news today, session duration, and it have all the pairs marked out on that sheet that I'll trade. And then I'll hand write in the trades as I take them. So I've got a format there. I've got a nice sheet with lines on it. And I can actually, as I said, like the first trade, that I, well, one of the first trades that I took here was the EU this morning. I had that marked in a range. And so I've marked that up. I took it short at 29. It was a range breakout. And right next to that, it says PO, punched out because it closed back in range. And a cross next to that saying, saying that trade's finished with, and then I'm looking for a re-entry. So, yeah, it's a mix of an Excel sheet that I print out, but then the actual trades themselves, I'm handwriting those in. So, uh, yeah, that's the way that I do it. That way it keeps it a little more tidier, so I, even I can understand it at the end of the day when I go back to look at it. Mm-hmm. Cool. And what are some of the things you think you do differently from all the other traders out there? Anything that kind of stands out or 
that you think is helping you a lot? Do you know, people who are successful and are constantly taking money out of the market, I mean, I'm not saying every day, obviously, you have your losing days, but the people who seem to be successful at this seem to be pretty similar. Now, I'm not talking about the criteria. There's hundreds, if not thousands, of ways to trade that will work. Mm -hmm. But when you look at the people and the people that I've spoken with and the people that are actually successful, they all seem to be very, very similar. You'll say something and I'll say, yeah, that's right, or I thought that, or yeah, that's what I'm thinking, or that. They are very, very similar. And I don't know, it must be that mindset thing again, whereby they're all working within the same kind of environment when they're working. You know, they're not all over the place. They haven't got those euphoric highs and those deep, deep lows that affect the way they trade. So I wouldn't say that I'm doing anything different to anyone else. It's just a case of taking control of myself and not losing the plot when things go wrong. And so, yeah, very, very similar. I think most traders who are successful are very, very similar. Yeah, I totally agree with this also. I think it's like, magical that you have to apply, but it's just that some people don't realize what they do wrong sometimes. So they mm -hmm. kind of have to find those things and it's tough a little bit sometimes. It really is. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. It so really what is. are some of the things that you've done like really wrong in the past in your trading? <sighs> what have I done wrong in the past? What have I done wrong in the past? Well, I would think that, just trying to think, I suppose it was the early days when Before I understood what this was about, you know, I had that feeling of in invincibility. And, you know, in the early days, my biggest mistakes were not accepting that I was wrong. So I'd take a trade and I just wouldn't accept that I was wrong. That trade, if I took a long and it was going short and it was moving down, moving down, I didn't want to accept that I was wrong. And I would move my stops. Or in some cases, I'd take the st stop off completely. And I actually blew up a, a couple of small accounts by doing that. So... You know, that is probably the biggest mistake that I made in the early days is not accepting that you need to accept that you're going to be wrong sometimes. Again, going back to the same things, and I know I keep going back to the same things, but they are so important to me. Like one of the most important lessons that I learned from Mark, Dutton, from Mark Douglas and from Kim was that the outcome of any trade is not about being right, it's about doing the right thing. So if I knew that from the start, it would have saved me a lot of wasted time and helped me hang on to a lot more of my money. So, You know, the moment you place a trade, the moment that you actually hit the button, whether you're buying or selling, that trade's got a 50-50 chance of going either way the moment mm -hmm. you hit it. You've got no way of knowing whether you're right or wrong. But all you can do is stick with that criteria and work with the probability, working with your edge, your trading strategy. And over a period, over a number of trades, you should come out on top. You will come out on top. So, yeah, that was probably the worst thing that I ever did was not accepting that I could be wrong. Who wants to be wrong, after all? Mm -hmm. And it's funny because I think I got the same takeaway from reading Trading the Zone a few years ago. That was like mm -hmm. precisely the thing I was struggling with. I was like always expecting my trades to be right because like I was doing the analysis, so I should yeah. be ha placing the right trades. But as you said, yeah. it's like 50-50 all the time, which makes a big difference. <laughs> I like that. Really well, this good. is you take a trade and you're thinking, well, why is it doing that? No, it's meant to be going up. Look, my criteria has been here. It's been hit and it should be going up. It should be going up. Exactly. Yeah, it should be moving. Exactly. You just don't want to accept that it's wrong. And of course, you're losing money if it goes the wrong way. And start with, of course, you're looking at the, you know, that lifestyle and pulling that money out of it. And that's just not happening. You know, you don't want to be wrong. You want it to go the way that you dreamed it would. So, yeah, that's mm -hmm. probably it. <laughs> totally. Is there any other advice or any lessons you would like to share with the listeners? Anything they have to apply or think about? Best advice I can give, in my humble opinion, is... I don't know. Again, the most important aspect of trading is the psychological aspect. And it should reflect, because it is so important, it should be reflected in the time that you actually spend working on it and trying to master it. Much more time should be spent on that than is spent on anything else. Most people who are starting out that I know, I know absolutely that most of the people listening to this, if they're just starting out or people who are just starting out, they'll shun this advice and they'll just head straight for the excitement of the charts. And at the same time, they'll be sitting there you know, buzzing with these charts that are moving and the flashing lights and everything else, and they'll be sitting there deciding whether they're going to buy a Maserati or a Lamborghini with their first lot of wins. That's how they think. But the more time you can actually give to study in the psychology, the better chance you'll have of being successful. So the other thing to remember is that the study of the psychological effects is never, it's something that you won't get to a day and you'll think, that's it. I know everything there is about psychology and I'll never need to look at it again because the psychological aspect, well, it's, it's perishable. You know, something may happen you today that gives you the hunt that annoys you and that will affect your psychology and when you sit down to trade tomorrow that could have an effect even whether you know it or not on how you're trading 
So events in your life can throw your approach to trading off course at any time, which is why I constantly go back and I'm listening to the audio books all the time and anything else that I can find. And I'm constantly searching for new ways of studying, new ways of learning. I'm always willing to listen to people talking about that kind of thing. Because those people that are selling the dodgy systems that don't really work, they won't talk about that. That's not important to them. The ones who sit and talk about the psychology are more often than not worth listening to. So it's a never ending process. It's something that I'm just consistently building on and, and work. Yeah, I totally agree with this. This is like continuous improvement. You're always going to have to improve yourself and work on yourself, probably forever, as long as you, you really want to do. trade. Yeah, absolutely. Like you do. You really do. Cool. So, how can people find you if they want to connect with you or reach out? Okay, if people want to find me, they can get me on my website, which is uk2asia.com. That's UK numeral to asia.com so uk to asia.com is my website or they'll get me on twitter which is at uk to asia so i'm out there every day that i'm trading and putting things out trying to help people and yeah they'll always find me on there cool and kevin what kind of goal do you have for the future goals and future plans well my future plans include spending more time with our family out in thailand my partner's from thailand and we've got family out there So the future plans are being able to spend more time out in Thailand, spending more time traveling around Southeast Asia. We want to visit a lot more countries in Southeast Asia. But the other thing, I mean, a goal of mine, a really big goal of mine, and it's one of the reasons why I started doing this in the first place, is to be in a position where I'm able to give something back to those people in that little village in India where I went. You know, those people, they didn't even know what they were doing at the time, but they helped me so much get through a really difficult period in my life you know, after losing my business. And they don't even realize what they did for me. And it would be nice to be able to get back out there, spend some more time with them and help them out a little bit, give them something back. That's pretty cool. And what's your main motivation for all this? Motivation, it comes mainly from the location freedom that this can offer. Get this right and, you know, you make your full-time living from it. You've got absolutely <laughs> no need to tell you about the location freedom, eh? Mm -hmm. And the chance to make things a little bit better for others. It gives you that chance to do that as well. Yeah, as long as I have good internet, that's the only year. Uh, Absolutely, thing. yeah, yeah. You need to check that in advance, get your internet. But then again, okay, you haven't got internet for a day or two. You just don't trade. It's as simple as that. Of course. Which, yeah. the way that I'm trading, it works like that. It doesn't matter being flat at the end of the day, no open trades of a night, no open trades of a weekend. If I don't have internet for three days, all right, I'm not earning any money, but I'm not, it doesn't really matter. I can have three days off. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's the location freedom is the main, main thing that, that pushes me with this. Great. So, Kevin, we have a question we ask the guests at the end of every podcast. If you could mm -hmm. give only one piece of advice for traders in one sentence, what would okay. that one sentence of advice be? Okay, well, you'll hear people saying that to be successful, many, many people say this, and I heard it all the time, to be successful as a trader, you have to trade without emotion. Now, we've gone over this a little bit earlier on, but, you know, this is impossible. It's absolutely impossible to trade without emotion. Every second of your life, you're experiencing an emotion. So when you're in a losing trade, you'll feel down. When you're winning, you'll be buzzing. You'll feel euphoric. Don't try and stop or suppress those emotions, whatever you do. Don't try and stop them or suppress them. Just ensure that you don't let those emotions have an effect on your criteria or your trading rules. Don't waste your energy trying to control your emotions because you won't do it. Use that energy to control the way that you trade. Wow. Kevin Hunt, thanks so much for being on the podcast. It's been a pleasure to have you here. Uh, absolute pleasure speaking to you, Etienne. Yeah. Thanks for inviting me. Thanks for listening to the Desire to Trade podcast. To get all the information on this show, free articles, and unique resources, make sure to check out www.desiretotrade.com and subscribe. Please leave us a review and let us know what you thought about the show. It's time to become the best trader you can be. See you next time.